All right, today we are working on our first exercise for the fall semester. We looked at Photo Bucket under Digital Art 1 and the exercises in Exercise 1, and we have instructor demonstrations, and we have past student examples, and whether they are black or white or color, what you'll see is that they're a jumble of different line art from different sources that are not cropped off on any one side, right? They're free floating like a t-shirt design or a sticker. And they don't have an up, a down, you know, a right orientation. The other thing that's nice about them, you can kind of see SpongeBob pretty clearly here, is that they all have a similarity in their line character, right? So it helps to take them all from a similar series or type of line art. And Disney's really good at this. The artist we are inspired by for this project is an artist out of Chicago by way of South America named Arturo Herrera. And if you want to research him further, some great stuff. But he is a traditional artist. He's also worked digitally. But what he kind of does most often is his, is his creative way of sketching is collaging. And especially in his early work, he did a lot of collages with coloring books. And he especially liked doing stuff with Disney imagery. And then, so you can see like all of these collages using Disney um, coloring books for the most part. And he was doing these by hand. And these were in the 1990s. As the computer got better, he found that he could design more epic artworks. And he's really known for his murals and his large paintings. So this isn't huge, <laughs> this image online, but what you can see is that it has some kind of Disney character lines. It looks like Cinderella, little birds, stretch marks or stretching arms. And then he kind of uh, com combines that with these drips. Now it's funny that he uses Disney because Disney is the most famous corporate entity for suing people for, for using their intellectual property. But Arturo Herrera, to my knowledge, he's a very well-known artist. Disney's definitely aware of his work, right? And to my knowledge, they have never uh, successfully sued him, right? So here we have a full wall mural that's created entirely from Snow White and the Seven Dwarves line art. Can you guys see that? And the reason he can get away with it and Disney won't sue him is you can't point to it and easily say, oh yeah, that's, that's dopey. You know, that's grumpy. You're not seeing their faces. They're, he's making them into formal marks, right? He's just taking those coloring book lines and he's using them as his own lines. So that's the inspiration for this project. We don't necessarily want it to be fully recognizable. We want it to just be interesting and visually engaging to us. Okay, so how do we get go about doing this? So some past instructor demonstrations. Here I used He-Man, but notice that I took out a lot of the faces. Here I did a colored version of it. I'll show you how we can color it. This is Garfield, but it's just barely Garfield, right? It's just using that kind of line art. This was actually done from blueprints. So patent office blueprints, same thing here. And that can be an interesting use of kind of technical lines versus gestural lines. I don't even remember what this one's from, but it's cool, right? It's on its own and on and on. 
Looks like I've done Kelvin and Hobbes before. I'd forgotten this one. Looney Tunes, you know, so whatever kind of line art you want, you like. So I, I had started already looking for Kelvin and Hobbes stuff. And with Google image search as it is now, we are looking for images that are 2000 minimum 2000 by 2000 pixels. And once we find that image, we right click on it and we say open image in new tab so that we can zoom in on it and see the quality of it. And this is high quality. And then I can just drag and drop it onto the desktop. And now I have three references that are high enough resolution. And close those tabs. This one was just under 2000. You'll also notice that this one isn't pure white and black. Open in, it's like a slightly off white. And you can see it's not as big, right? But I really like it. So I'm going to use it because it's so close to 2000. But I'm going to have to, to treat it a little differently. I'll have to get rid of that background. But I have the ability to do that. This one, very nice, high quality. Remember, it can definitely be more than 2000 as well. Now I have one, two, three, four, five. And if I want to check really quick that they're all individual, I can open them in preview. Here they are, one, two, three, four, five. And you can do more than five, but five is the minimum required. Oh, I really like that one too. <laughs> yeah, there are some good ones. I really like this one. So maybe I'll give myself a few extras. Remember, you open them in a new tab, you zoom in on them. I just love the the hand done ink and how it's printed. As an illustrator that a lot of my professional work has been in newspaper cartoons, um, I just really like the print artifacts. Now this one's interesting because you can see this is a high resolution image and I can use this. The problem is it's blurrier, right? It's not as high quality as say this, well, this one is. So you see the difference in the edge quality? So that's why you want to zoom in on them. And maybe this one I can do without, just because it is kind of blurry. So it's good to have more than five if you need them. All right, now I don't need to do searches anymore. Instead, what I need to do is just open one of these. And I'm going to open maybe one of my favorites. And if you don't know which one is your favorite, you can select them all, just double click and open them in preview. And I think I want to build them based on this one. I just love the energy of this. So that one ends with a seven. <laughs> so I want you to mark a primary reference. I'm going to mark it with green. So that's my primary reference. And this one now, I am going to right click and I'm going to open this with Photoshop. Right click, open with, it's just bringing up the list, Photoshop. The other way I can do that is I can drag the file down to my Photoshop icon in my dock. Now Photoshop takes a little while to open. So I'm going to just talk you through this process. Just like Arturo Herrera will layer up cutouts that he does with an X-Acto knife from coloring books for his sketches. For his collages, and there's some videos of him doing that. We can do that all digitally. We can separate the lines out from this source material and we can start layering it on top of itself. This is a nice little Snow White example. To create our own composition. And this is where I first saw his work at the, at the Arm & Hammer Museum at, um, in LA. Okay. 
So I have my primary reference. It's now open in Photoshop. What I would like you to do is go up to Window in Photoshop and go to Workspace and go to Essentials Default. Right. Window, Workspace, Essentials Default. So it, they all roughly look the same. So, because we're going to be talking about layers here. Now, I've opened my original one. What I'm going to do first is say image canvas size. Because right now that image is exactly as large as that image was from the internet that I pulled. And it wasn't quite big enough. So if I look at the canvas size, I can see it in terms of pixels. And I can see that it's not even 2000 by 2000. Instead, it's 1897 by 2567. So I'm going to grow my pixels. Not my image, because if I grow the image, if I force the pixels to be more, it's going to soften the edges of all the marks. But I want to grow the, the paper size that I'm collaging on. So let's change it to inches again. And I'm going to make it, actually, let's change it to pixels. And I'm going to make it 4,000 wide. And you should all do the same by 6,000 tall. I'm going to have it grow out from the center, and I'm going to use a canvas extension color of white, which are all the defaults. So 4,000 pixels by 6,000 pixels as a canvas size is the first thing I do. Okay, then it gives me some working space. And if I want to see it all on the screen, I can hit Command-0, and it will shrink it down. Right? And if I want to zoom out more, I can do Command-, minus and I see what my working space is. This gives me space to manipulate what's inside. Then I'm going to do something a little odd. And I'm going to go up to Edit, and we're going to end up doing this a lot, and Fill, F-I-L-L, -L, so Edit, Fill. And I'm going to fill this whole layer with just white at 100%. So I just painted over, deleted, gessoed, the paper, that allows me now to bring in my source material as separate layers instead of as the background. So I'll minimize this. This is my workspace. These are my references. This is the first one, my primary one, that I'm going to drag and drop in. Right? And once I bring it in, it's going to give me what's called a transform box around it. If I hold down Shift, I can size it while still keeping its proportions. If I hold down Shift and Option at the same time, I can drag it from a corner and grow it, locking its proportions from the middle, make it a little bit bigger. If I let go and click outside of the corners of the transform box, I can rotate it. And if I don't hold down anything and I pull at the corners, I can stretch it. Remember, these cartoon glumps have no up or down. I can also right click within that transform box and do things like flip it horizontally, flip it vertically. And then my favorite, I can warp it, which puts like this little nine square chicken wire mesh and it allows me to push and pull it in selective ways. And then I hit return. And then I can hit, um, if I want to go back to that, I can go up to edit and what's called free transform. And we're going to get lots of practice at this. This is one of the skills we're building. But the shortcut for that is shown right to us under the edit menu, and that's command T. So at any time, I can take a layer and I can hit command T and get that transform box back. So if I want to shrink it down again, if I want to rotate it again, if I want to warp it, I'm able to. Now you guys probably aren't able to see that easily on the projector screen, but this image is not quite pure white. It's a slight off white, right? So we'll be able to take care of that, but not right now. One way to kind of work with that for now is I'm gonna um, change the mode of these layers eventually. 